Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia News Line and the other top stories we are talking to you on Friday, the 30th of September. India and China are going to intensify efforts from the Pakistani police officer kills man accused of blasphemy. And Sri Lanka opposition leader Premadasa wants to renegotiate IMF terms. And now for all the details. New Delhi and Beijing have agreed to work with urgency and to deliver their efforts to realize the After India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval held a meeting on the sidelines of BRICS NSAs in Russia. In a statement, China's foreign ministry said the two sides believe the stability of China India relations is in the fundamental and long term interests of the two sides and conducive to regional peace and development. They agreed to implement the consensus reached by the leaders of the two countries strive to enhance mutual understanding and trust, create conditions for the improvement of bilateral relations and continue to maintain communication on this. The statement added. Earlier in a different event, India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar had also highlighted the progress in border talks with Beijing and said 75% of disengagement problems with China had been sorted out. However, he added the two nations still have some things to do. He said India and China never had an easy relationship in the past and said it was violation of multiple agreements by China which led to the situation in 2020. If there is a solution to disengagement and there is a return to peace and tranquility, we can look at other possibilities, he added. Moving on, India's Supreme Court on Friday granted bail to opposition leader and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival in a graft case, paving the way for his release almost six months after he was arrested. K. Jival was taken into custody in March by India's Financial Crime Fighting Agency weeks before the country's national elections in relation to alleged irregularities in the capital city's liquor policy. Although he was granted bail in that case in July, he remained in detention due to his arrest a month previously by the federal agency CBI in a graft case related to the same policy. While he left the jail, the Delhi chief minister cannot go to Delhi secretariat or sign any file without the lieutenant governor's consent. Supreme Court. और भारत में अगर किसी की चलेगी ना तानाशाही की चलेगी ना सीबीआई की चलेगी ना ईडी की चलेगी ना इनके तानाशाही कानूनों की चलेगी भारत में अगर किसी की चलेगी तो देश के संविधान की चलेगी While the AAP rejoices Kejriwal's release BJP has said the Delhi chief minister should immediately resign from his post as Supreme Court has granted him only conditional bail Terming Kejriwal as outright dishonest, BJP said the top court has neither quashed the charges against him nor acquitted him in the liquor policy case and added he lacks the moral right to hold a constitutional position. Kejriwal's release is expected to boost the morale of his decade-long Ahmadmi party as it will allow him to campaign in regional elections next month in the northern state of Haryana, where AAP is trying to make inroads and in Delhi, early next year. And 35 Indian nationals have been released from service by the Russian army in over the last two months, New Delhi said on Thursday, adding that the total 45 Indian men have been discharged till now. In the weekly press briefing, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal said when Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Russia in July, he had raised the issue of Indians being recruited in Russian forces fighting in the Russia-Ukraine war. He added, following the discussions by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Russian President Vladimir Putin, 35 Indian nationals have been discharged from the service. He said around six have been repatriated by the Indian mission in Moscow and more will return in the coming days. 
He further said around 50 more Indians are still with the Russian army. We are continuously in talks with the Russian government and Russian authorities for their discharge, Jaswal said. Since Prime Minister's uh, visit, 35 Indian nationals have been discharged. Uh, prior to that, prior to July, his visit, 10 Indian nationals had been discharged. So 45 Indian nationals have been discharged so far. Several of them, of them have come back. Six of them came back two days ago. And several others would be shortly coming back. Moving on, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif said on Thursday that friendly countries had played a major role in helping meet requirements placed before Islamabad by the IMF, which included arranging additional external financing and rolling over debt. Sharif said he would not provide further detail on the assistance at this moment. Pakistani official had said they were trying to arrange up to 2 billion US dollars to meet a financing gap and were in discussions with commercial banks for this. Islamabad has for years relied on China, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates for financial assistance to meet external financing requirements and avoid sovereign default, which it came close to last summer. <laughs> जो कुछ किया है बिल्कुल एक जो भाई भाई के लिए करता है और दोस्त दोस्त के लिए करता है इन ब्रदर और दोस्त मुमालिक ने पिछली मर्तबा भी इस मुद्दा पर उन्होंने उसी तारीख को उन्होंने दोहराया है और पूरा साथ पाकिस्तान का दिया है the IMF Executive Board will discuss Pakistan 7 billion US dollars bailout program on September 25th allaying fears of a prolonged delay in much-needed funds for the country. The South Asian nation struck a staff-level agreement with the global lender in June, but board approval for the 37-month program has been pending since then. Moving on, a police constable gunned down a blasphemy suspect while in custody in Pakistan's Quetta on Thursday. It is the first incident of its kind where numerous blasphemy accused have been lynched by outraged mobs in the past. In a shocking incident on Thursday, a police officer in Pakistan's Quetta gunned down a man held in custody on charges of allegedly making derogatory remarks about Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad Baloch, the senior superintendent of police in Quetta, said that the police officer accused of the killing had been arrested. The officer, who he did not name, had accessed the police station where the victim, a Muslim, accused of blasphemy, was being held. The man accused of blasphemy had been taken into custody earlier in the week and moved to the more heavily fortified station in Quetta due to a huge mob that gathered and demanded the man be handed over to them. Blasphemy is punishable by death in Pakistan. However, no one has been executed by the state for it but numerous accused have been lynched by outraged mobs. Blasphemy accusations fueled mobs of people that attacked Christian neighborhoods in eastern Punjab province last year, displacing hundreds. In June, another mob beat a man to death in northern Pakistan after accusing him of burning pages of the Quran. Sri Lanka's main opposition leader, Sajid Premadasa, has said he will reopen negotiations with the International Monetary Fund on its $2.9 billion loan if he wins the September 21 presidential election. Media reports quoted him as saying that he wants to ease the financial burden on the public and wants rich individuals to bear more of the cost of the economic adjustment that came with the bailout program. Incumbent President Vikramasinghe is the main contender for the post and is credited for winning the International Monetary Fund low. But critics say the autistry measures have hit the poor heart. The elections will be the first for the country since an economic crisis in 2022 caused the island nation to default on its debt. Another main contender is Anura Kumara Desanayake, a candidate with the roots in Marxist socialist policy. This NIK has also said he will renegotiate International Monetary Fund terms. However, analysts say these measures will add to policy uncertainty. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great week.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.